What's up, everybody? Matt Kajewski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel. Today, we're talking Week 10 college football bets, the Friday doubleheader. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. We are brought to you by Bet365, and they have a limited time offer for those of you living in Kentucky, Ohio, New Jersey, Virginia, Iowa, and Colorado. You can make your first deposit. Bet $5 on any game, whether that wins or loses, you are getting $150 in the form of bonus bets. This only takes a few seconds. I urge you boost that bankroll. It's not often you just get money handed out to you by sportsbooks, and it's not going to be around forever. You need to be 21 to play, 18 if you're in Kentucky. And if you or someone you know has a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Otherwise, link in the video description below. Hit this before it is gone. Two game slate. Kick things off in the ACC. Boston College taken on Syracuse. I took the three points with Boston College. You're currently going to see some threes on the board. Think this is going to go to two and a half. It already has in plenty of spots. The total in the game is 50 and a half. Boston College has been a weird team this year. They have a bunch of surprising wins, close games, played Florida State close, lost by just two points, then get blown out by Louisville. Beat Virginia by three, Army by three, beat Virginia Tech, which is awesome, and then only beat UConn by seven. So you can clearly see a pattern. They're in games they shouldn't, and they're also in games where their opponent shouldn't be in them. So it's tough to evaluate Boston College. I do like the offense since they made the switch to Tom Castellanos under center. The O-line is awesome for this team. They essentially lost all their starters last year to some combination of injury or graduation. Now they're a veteran unit, 21st in pass blocking, 22nd in run blocking. So they've been able to run the ball, especially with Castellanos. But Garwo, when he's healthy, he's missed the last couple games. But they have a slew of backs, Robichaud, Broom. And we might get back Ryan O'Keefe here. Last week, he was doubtful, but he was practicing. And the coaches were going to see how he progressed. Didn't do enough, but now we're another week removed from that rhetoric. I think there's a better chance we see the wide receiver one return. Their defense is healthy. I don't know how much that really says. They're not good on defense, 117, but they do have a strength. They're 69th against the run, so above average, outside the top 100 in coverage. That's exactly what you want to do well when you're facing Syracuse. They can't throw the ball. Not entirely their fault. They've just been so injured this year. Aronde Gadsden, their wide receiver, one's out for the year. Trevor Pena hasn't played recently. They also lost Kalen Ellis, one of their guards for the year. On defense, they also lost Dennis Jaquez, an edge rusher for the year, as well as corner Jeremiah Wilson. It's been very brutal on the injury front for Syracuse. And the offense can only run. Garrett Schrader's a dual threat. LaQuint Allen's been fine when they're not getting blown out of games. But as a passer, Garrett Schrader, 62.5% completion, 7.7 yards per attempt, okay. But he has more turnover-worthy plays than big-time throws. This team lives through the run, where Schrader is averaging 3.6 yards per carry. But yeah, mismatch here. Syracuse doesn't run block well. They're 121st in that department, now facing the strength of Boston College's defense. On the other side, Syracuse has now just been absolutely clobbered since they started conference play. Of course, they rattle off four wins facing Colgate, Western Michigan, Purdue, and Army. Then you face Clemson, North Carolina, Florida State, and Virginia Tech and get blown out in every single one of those games. This team doesn't rush the passer at all. They're 118th there. They're also a little weaker against the run, which does not bode well for a team facing Boston College and that strong offensive line up front. Boston College does concern me, having played down to Army and UConn and Virginia. But ultimately, this team has more strengths than Syracuse at this point in the year. They're on the road, but we will take three points. If it's two and a half for you, I'm okay with it. Try to find the three if you can. Second game, this one's tricky. Mountain West game, Colorado State, Wyoming. Spread is six and a half in favor of Wyoming. The total is 41 and a half. Interesting game. I haven't bet it yet, but I have a lean, which I may end up taking before kickoff. Starting on the Colorado State side, this team had a bunch of injuries. A lot of them in game too. So prior to the game, Kobe Johnson, one of their running backs was out. Don't think that's too impactful. But the wide receiver one, Torrey Horton, came on and off the field like three or four times before eventually leaving entirely. He's the best player on their offense. Him being out would be massive for Wyoming. 
huge detriment to Colorado State. But then on defense, Aiden Hector didn't play in the game. He's one of their starting corners. They also lost Chigozi Anusium, another starting corner, got hurt in the game. And defensive tackle Cam Barito got hurt in the game. So we might see Colorado State down three starters on defense. A defense which isn't particularly good. 73rd overall, 67th against the run, 74th in coverage. So middling, slightly above average defense, if we're being generous. Facing a Wyoming offense, which can run the ball, that's their best skill. They're 72nd in overall offensive efficiency, 70th in pass blocking, 9th in run blocking, which is where they really excel. Fairly healthy. All their injuries are on defense. They did get Harrison Whaley back. The quarterback, Andrew Peasley, has mobility, 3.1 yards per carry. Doesn't do a ton as a passer. Fortunately, I don't think they'll have to. But on defense, Wyoming does have a strength. They're very good against the run, 34th. Not bad against the pass, 50th, but a little weaker there. The real problem I have with the defense is the injuries that we saw Wyoming have. Tyrese Davis hasn't played in a while. He's one of their corners. In game, they lost Wyatt Eckler, starting safety. Jordan Bertignol, a defensive tackle. And Cole Godbout, another defensive tackle. Pacing doesn't really line up for an over in this game, but that's kind of where I'm siding. Colorado State will play fast. They're seventh in pace. Wyoming tries to slow it. They're one, 120th. But man, injuries on defense to both of these teams. I wish we had Torrey Horton status. I think he's very impactful, but we actually saw some other receivers step up. Goffney for Colorado State. Ross Simmons has been solid. Dallin Holker has been really good at tight end. I still think they can move the ball on Wyoming, especially if these defenders all miss. So I'm going to try to wait for pregame, see what injury information I can confirm on both these teams and hopefully play a greasy over at 41 and a half but that will be determined prior to kickoff if you have a question like you want to know are these guys playing are they not i'm available on twitter with my dms open at matt underscore kajeski i've had a few of you reach out in situations like this i'm happy to tweet out the injuries just let me know otherwise if you have a comment i missed something you like a different side you agree with me would love to hear it below and we'll be back for the Saturday game. So until then, good luck, everybody. We'll catch you next time.